Uh, good morning from my part, and many thanks for the kind invitation to come over here to talk about the uh, future internet PPP, maybe in a different flavor that we heard yesterday from our uh, chief technology architect, who was focusing on the technology components that there are um, in, the, in the program itself. What I will do today is, and actually the last presentation prior to myself, reminded me of the days when I used to be an FX trader in a bank. So maybe I should go to the HNX marketplace next time and see how that works. Uh, I will be focusing on issues that stem actually from global discussion, uh, that stem from the discussion on the regional ideas about cloud, and then oh, there are some uh, items that I would like to touch about the local aspects of the cloud, whether we talk about the industry, the public sector, or the, uh, the SMEs. Uh, why to touch all of those? I think we, we heard yesterday and we heard this morning also that there are implications that are uh, common, that are universal. There are things that are more uh, customized or tailored for the various sectors as such. And I will focus in my, I only have three slides, so I will focus on the, uh, the second slide, especially on those common elements uh, that we need to pay heed in order to understand what really is happening within the industry and how the industry is moving forward in cloud and what it will mean for European companies and European industries, but also for the European workforce and the economic sectors uh, uh, at large. Uh, the reason why I would like to focus on that is that one of my tasks prior to this was that I was working at the European Roundtable of the Industrialists in their working group of competitiveness issues for European industries. And there you had together around the same table, talking about cloud, talking about the ICT industries, you had the large automotive companies from Germany, uh, you had the French retail uh, companies coming together and then you had also the ICT companies from the Nordic countries or from Spain or Italy. And, and we had very interesting discussions about that. What are the larger implications of cloud for European competitiveness uh, in, say, five years from now? And, and we, can, we can go into that in, uh, in a few minutes. So I guess this works like this. Very good. So about the future internet PPP. Uh, when I started this uh, role that I have as the chairman of the FIPPP uh, in spring this year, I have to say that I had on my plate suddenly a public-private partnership with 150 members with a 600 million budget and, and people with various divergence in the different agendas uh, where to take the PPP and what are the key objectives for uh, that type of work. And I took it as a challenge. I took it as an exercise that needs to happen in order, for instance, to Horizon 2020 to proceed in a way that there is a true public-private sector cooperation and collaboration in place. And I think that's one of the key assets, as we have heard yesterday, for instance, for Europe, that we are able to do that type of public-private sector cooperation uh, because I know that in many other regions of the world, uh, with a, uh, the, the, the process just works in a different fashion. In Europe, we should utilize that asset to the fullest, that we are able to discuss whether it's the standards or whether it's the business modeling part of the future internet or the cloud services or the cloud industry uh, for Europe as such. So, Stemming from those discussions from the early part of this year to where we are at the current stage is that we have a clear vision. We have a clear mission what we are going to do with the FIPPP and we have developed, as you heard yesterday, a platform of technology enablers that can be used for cloud services, whether in the private sector as they were first intended or in the public sector as we have discussed here in in, in this event. So that catalog you can, you can access in the, uh, there, there is a website link that you can go into and then look into what is there in, in place. But the key objectives of the FIPPP I think are quite self-evident and I think they are common to many of the other EU initiatives that you have currently ongoing. 
So primarily to acceleration of the adoption of future internet technologies, or I may say ICT in general. Because we know that the adoption and the usage and getting the benefits out of those ICT technologies vary uh, in European countries uh, to a great degree. You can talk about division between different countries, about their uh, capability of actually getting the most out of the ICT or the most out of the future internet. And one of the key objectives of this exercise is to uh, actually narrow that gap between the European uh, industries and the European countries so that we would have a more universal platform to really take the full uh, use and the full benefit out of the future internet technologies as such so that there would not be a division uh, in skills or a division on, on, on the assets. So what we're doing is that we are focusing on B2B. As we all know, the greatest GDP effects can be taken from the B2B side. Perhaps we, yesterday we discussed a lot about the consumer services of Facebook and Google and the cloud and all of those. But one of the greatest assets for Europe is that we have a, an efficient working industrial base that will be using the future internet technologies to a greater degree and actually through that integration will be able to become more competitive and more efficient and productive. That's a clear vision. Now I think it can happen because for instance in September this year I was in, a, in Berkeley uh, we had a workshop with US economists, European economists and the industry coming together. And in that workshop, one of the key findings that I found was that there is actually one thing that the Americans envy from the Europeans, and it's the industrial base. And if we are able to tap into that industrial base and truly utilize that as an asset, that's one of the key competitive advantages that we have. There is an explanation for that, and that explanation is primarily that if you look into the European history of manufacturing, we have been able to innovate in different product uh, manufacturing from time to time again. And that happens here in Germany, that happens in other European countries as well. That's kind of the positive idea of European competitiveness and competence in, in this case. So we, we should not only focus on the, the negatives or the risks related to the cloud, but really look for the positive economic opportunities that you can find by integrating that into the key assets that Europe has and those assets that are really working. And obviously, different countries are doing it together, but also in the, in the European sense. Uh, and that leads to the smart digital infrastructures and services as such. Uh, in Finland, which is my home country, there is an interesting debate ongoing currently uh, about the role of ICT and about the competitiveness of the local economy as such. Uh, there is a debate that says that uh, it's okay more or less to, to fail. It's okay to, uh, to uh, try again and with the trial and error to try to find the right type of a recipe for regaining uh, national competitiveness. But it focuses very little on actually what is the key asset on becoming competitive, which is to manufacture and produce those type of products and services that sell in a global marketplace. That very much look into the, uh, how do you make attractive new products and services? And that is the idea here with the, uh, with the work that we are actually doing with the SMEs. We are giving them the tools to worry less about the IT and to focus more on the innovation and the product and the marketing and the strategy and selling of those products than thinking about the uh, ICT uh, infrastructure as such. So that increase of effectiveness in the business processes through the technologies, it is the key thing. And one of the panels yesterday actually focused on that. Because when you go to the SMEs and you talk to the CEOs of those companies, they're not interested, as we heard yesterday, about security. They're not interested about privacy. They're interested how much does it cost for them, how much it will help them to become more competitive in the market where they currently are. 
So if you focus and you talk to the same language to the SMEs, and you focus on the ideas that what will be the added value of that ICT investment in my company, what it will do for me internally for making the organization more effective, more productive, or what it will do to the product or the service that I'm actually selling, then you talk in the same language with the SMEs. And that, uh, in the FIPPP and the other exercises ongoing currently, I think we should focus more and more because we, we simply cannot talk about SMEs as a homogeneous group. We have to be able to figure out what are the type of SMEs that we would like to really target with the, uh, with the technologies that we have at our disposal. We need to target those SMEs that are competitive, that are for growth, that are for creating jobs, that are for uh, really becoming global leaders in certain marketplaces as such. I think it's self-evident, but I just wanted to, had to get out of my, uh, my heart in that sense. So we, we need to be focused on the fact that the ICT is an enabler. Technology matters, but it doesn't matter as much that it's only the, the kind of the only talking point that you have about this change in cloud and the future. But what really matters is, and it was raised yesterday in one of the panels, is that you have to be able to increase the awareness of the European entrepreneurs about the benefits of ICT, and you have to be able to teach them, to educate them, and, and the teaching is actually the key thing here, to teach them to have the will to change. We've been talking about the political will yesterday, but there is a, a crucial need of actually driving a momentum in Europe to get the entrepreneurs that we have plenty in Europe to really uh, embrace the new technologies in a new way. And then I'm talking about all different industries together. So not only the ICT industry here, but all the, all the industries together are working on the same uh, platform. And when you do that, you quickly find out that um, not only the language changes, the objectives change, the priorities change, but at the same time, you need to be able, of course, to educate the people, the ICT people, to talk the same language with the entrepreneurs. That's one of the areas that we're working, for instance, in the FIPPP currently, because the phase three, uh, which is now uh, starting in December, actually aims to take the technology we have at the FIPPP and open that up through intermediary organizations to the European SMEs so that they can utilize it for their various purposes that they have internally and in different, different industries as such. Then, uh, this is a part of a current research that's been done at, at UC Berkeley by, and, and Stanford as well, but so by Professor Seisman Kushida and, and, and Jonathan Murray, who is actually the CTO of Warner Music and former Microsoft. Uh, 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 I think he was a CTO there at some point, or working with the CTO. The thing is that yesterday there was a lot of discussion about the economic opportunity that the cloud generates, that it generates uh, future growth, it generates future jobs, and, and that. And I fully agree with that. But we need to go deeper into that understanding what are the sectors, for instance, where it does create jobs, and what are the sectors, for instance, where it's actually taking the jobs away. And that's part of the, the change that is currently happening. We should not think that the ICT is a, uh, a medicine for all the ills. It's not. It, it, it's, it's a thing that will actually create some social ills as well, but at the same time, it is able to mend some situations and help certain type of sectors to thrive uh, much better than the others. If you look into the current uh, studies that are made about the economic impact of ICT, it is usually the companies that are already investing in ICT that are faring better in a global marketplace. And they are the ones that will be investing in the, uh, the cloud technologies as well. So we're moving for those in the industry arena when you think about the large companies, and I used to work for one large European player, Nokia, for 12 years, uh, 
we are moving into an industrial transformation where the existing large players have to readapt to the cloud technologies and readapt their existing business models from the old world of IT scarcity, which basically meant that you were able to sell very large expensive systems to the companies to an area of IT abundance where you don't have to buy those expensive systems anymore, but you actually are able to lease and rent from the, from the cloud whatever you want based on your, your current usage. And that is currently changing the IT industry globally and within Europe as well. And what it will mean in the coming years is that you will see more industry consolidation happening, mergers, acquisitions in Europe and the United States as well. From the enterprise point of view, I already said it's about costs, it's about the added value to the organization as such, and it's the move from heavy capex uh, investments to opex investments, changing the whole idea so that within the organization you're not talking anymore to the CIO and the CFO, but you're talking to strategy, you're talking to marketing, you're talking to those parts of the company that are actually uh, oiling the gears of the production and, and selling whatever it is that you actually produce. So it's moving to the center of your business operations from the outskirts of the business operations as such. The wider economic impact, I already said that there are negatives, there are positives about cloud, there are within about the future internet as such, and you can, you can see it from here. So basically, tooling, whatever you produce, you have to include a service part there. You have to be able to innovate in that service area in order to really make your product, a physical product as well, more attractive in the global marketplace. We already know that there are success cases of that. And, and the easiest ones are that, for instance, I will use a, a Finnish example. So a, a, the lift, oper, uh, lift company, Kone, actually makes more money, or almost already more money, out of the maintenance of the lifts than actually selling the new lifts in, um, in, in different places. And all that maintenance is based on a cloud system that runs on the internet, embedded into the business model as such. So service innovation wins, and that's something that we, in Europe, we need to further develop. Because we have, as I said, we are great in the manufacturing of different products. But how do you really uh, add the service aspects in there and really become uh, a leader in that type of a marketplace? I think I exceeded my time, but uh, we will uh, wait until you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, before.